Directed Awareness Theory, Part 1, Foundations of Reality. The Foundational Claim. Despite major breakthroughs in physics, neuroscience, and cosmology, some of the most important questions remain unanswered. We still don't fully understand the strange behavior of the quantum world, and we've made little progress in unifying it with general relativity. The true nature of dark matter and dark energy remains elusive, and the origin of consciousness is still one of science's greatest mysteries. This theory explores a simple but far-reaching possibility, that awareness itself is not a product of matter, but something more fundamental. Instead of emerging from complex arrangements of physical systems, perhaps the physical world arises within awareness. If that's true, it could offer a unifying answer to many of the puzzles modern science continues to face, and it may have been right in front of us all along. Directed awareness theory proposes that the universe is a field of awareness that naturally organizes into stable, complex structures. Matter, energy, and physical laws aren't fixed givens, but expressions of consciousness organizing reality to support maximum sustainable complexity. Physical structures become organized forms of awareness, stable patterns that support even further complexity. Human consciousness, then, may not be produced by the brain, but instead represent a focus point within this universal field. Our minds shape and direct this awareness. They do not generate it. From this angle, quantum behavior becomes a process of possibility resolving into form. The hard problem of consciousness starts to soften, and the apparent fine-tuning of the cosmos becomes a natural feature of awareness optimizing its own potential. The universe in this light is not a blind machine that happened to stumble into sentience, but consciousness in motion, unfolding through ever more intricate forms. This framework doesn't compete with science, it aims to complete it. It provides a way to understand the patterns we see, not just the how, but perhaps the why. Understanding awareness and how it operates. For clarity and precision, this theory uses the term awareness rather than consciousness defining it as the raw, fundamental ability to notice, sense, or perceive. The word consciousness is often used to describe the inner world of thought, memory, emotions, and a sense of self. But awareness is more fundamental. It's the foundation upon which the experience of consciousness is built. Before there can be a self to have experiences, there must be a capacity for experience at all. Think of awareness like Wi-Fi. It's not the content itself, it's the invisible medium that makes content possible. Without a signal, your device can't run most of its meaningful functions. Likewise, without awareness, the software of the self, memories, thoughts, and identity, can't really operate. The active nature of awareness. At its core, awareness is directional and active. To be aware is not a passive or static condition. It's a goal-oriented activity. It involves the focusing of attention on an object. Awareness always points at something, much like a light radiates outward from a source and travels towards whatever lies in its path. You can't turn on a flashlight and expect the light to sit still. Light always moves. That motion, that inherent directionality, is part of what light is at its core. In the same way, awareness moves towards content. It reaches outward in order to know. Its very existence is directional by nature. Just as you can't have fire without heat, you can't have awareness without movement. Awareness without the ability to notice is not just unlikely, it's an incoherent concept entirely. The generative requirement. If we assume that reality is rooted in a field of awareness, and that awareness is inherently directional, then by necessity it must have something to point towards. This leads to a striking conclusion. Awareness must also be generative by nature. Without content to observe, awareness would have no direction to move, no function to perform. The observer and the observed cannot be fully separate. One gives rise to the other. Awareness not only perceives, it brings forth what it perceives. This generative aspect isn't optional. It's a logical requirement of awareness itself. The logic behind space and time. If awareness is the backdrop of all existence, intrinsically directed outward and inherently generative, then time and space arise as natural consequences of its behavior. To generate content is to generate possibility. 
but possibility only becomes meaningful when contrasted with what is not possible. In this way, possibility implies limitation. A limited context, a space in which possibilities can be defined, distinguished, and expressed, is required. And because the act of generating or observing possibility constitutes an event, this continuous activity gives rise to a sequence. That sequence is what we experience as time. This leads to a powerful implication. Awareness itself is unlimited. The limitations we observe in the physical world are not signs of its constraints. They are the form awareness takes to express itself. The infinite must generate the finite in order to be perceived. Here's the logical sequence that leads us to this view. One, awareness is directional by nature. Two, directionality implies the need for content to observe. Three, therefore, awareness must be generative. Four, for the possibility of content to exist, limitation is required. Five, the presence of limitation in our world implies that awareness itself is unlimited. Six, unlimited possibility must be expressed within a limited container, space, and space must rest upon something unlimited because a limited container held by another limited container leads to infinite regress, which is an incoherent argument. Seven, each time awareness observes content, an event occurs. Eight, its continuous noticing gives rise to the sequence of events that we call time. Thus, Space and time are not fundamental building blocks. They are emergent properties, side effects of awareness expressing itself. Space is the container. Time is the rhythm. Both arise within awareness as it engages with its own content. Reality evolves through directed awareness selecting from infinite possibility. With a working definition of awareness and its structure, we now explore how it generates the specific universe we inhabit. In quantum mechanics, particles exist in a cloud of possibilities called superposition, a state of pure probability, until they are observed, and upon observation, they collapse into a single outcome. Directed awareness theory offers a straightforward interpretation of this phenomenon. Awareness selects one possibility from many and then makes it real. The selection process. What we call the now is simply the current selection being made by awareness from an infinite field of potential. Once selected, that possibility becomes actual. It becomes our real present moment. This process resembles a film reel. Each frame exists in potential, but only one is projected at a time. The speed at which the reel plays, the speed of light, becomes the universe's processing rate, ensuring smooth transitions and coherent sequences. Why coherence wins over chaos. If awareness is choosing from infinite potential, why does it choose order over randomness? Because context matters a lot, especially in a mathematical sense. When awareness selects a coherent pattern, the pattern becomes a foundation upon which new patterns can be built. Coherence enables compounding possibility, a richer and more meaningful expansion of potential. And if the goal is to create as many possible coherent outcomes because you're expressing in an unlimited nature, this is actually the only strategy that makes any sense. Randomness lacks memory. Coherence creates continuity. It allows past choices to influence future ones, unlocking new dimensions of creativity and complexity. Here's an analogy. Rolling a 52-sided die gives 52 possible outcomes. That's it. Arranging a deck of 52 cards, however, yields more combination than there are atoms in the observable universe. The die represents randomness. The deck represents context. From this, we infer a core behavior of reality. Awareness chooses coherent pathways because they produce more richness over time. Randomness is shallow. Context is infinite. This explains why both time and the speed of light exist at all. How matter emerges as crystallized memory. If awareness repeatedly selects the same patterns, those patterns solidify. They become matter, a kind of crystallized memory of past choices. This explains why when we zoom in all the way, we find mostly empty space. It also makes sense of why mass and energy are interchangeable. Think of a rabbit crossing the same patch of grass every day. Eventually, a trail forms. 
The trail isn't separate from the rabbit's activity. It is the memory of that activity compacted into form. In the same way, matter is awareness's trail through possibility space, a stable record of frequently chosen configurations. It is structured presence arising from repeated intention. The puzzle of time, when the future shapes the past. In quantum physics, the delayed choice experiment suggests that future measurements can affect past events. This seriously challenges our conventional view of time. But if awareness selects entire coherent sequences, not just isolated outcomes, then this makes perfect sense. When awareness chooses a possibility, it doesn't just create a present, it retroactively fills in the history required to make that present coherent. It's like writing a novel. You might know the ending first, then you craft a backstory that makes it all make sense. Awareness does the same thing. It enforces coherence both forward and backward through time. So in this framework, time moves from both past to present and from future to present. This gives new depth to the symbol of infinity, awareness looping through possibility and memory, each influencing the now. Retrocausality isn't a glitch. It's its signature of reality as awareness-driven storytelling. Where this is going next, now that we've laid the foundation, defining what awareness is, how it operates, and why coherence matters, we're ready to explore how these principles manifest as structure. In the next part of this theory, we'll examine what space really is, why it's not an empty void, but an information architecture shaped by awareness itself. We'll take a fresh look at gravity, not as a force between objects, but as a flow of attention towards stable configurations. And we'll reframe dark matter and dark energy, not as cosmic mysteries, but as a natural consequence of a universe built from awareness first principles. If awareness is what's organizing reality, then the next step is understanding how it builds the framework that we live inside of, and that's exactly where we're headed.